the skin is sort of the window to the metabolic mm -hmm. soul. And it's, it's typically around the neck. But I mentioned one, which is called acanthosis nigricans, which is when the skin gets a little darker pigmented mm -hmm. and it gets a little kind of tissue papery texture. gets yeah. kind of crinkled and wrinkled. And this kind of hyperplastic or this um, uh, spastic growth of, of skin layers. And then you get the skin tags um, along that, those same areas, typically, typically wherever there's a skin fold around the neck, yeah. if the person's a little heavier um, or the armpits mm -hmm. um, is more common as well. But, um, but people often look at those kinds of things and just sort of groan in despair, thinking that there's nothing they can do. Right. Those will go away. Yeah. They will be completely gone. The skin will return to its natural texture and pigment. The skin tags will just fade away and get re kind of reabsorbed, if you will, back into the layer of the skin. And within months, it can all be gone without any evidence that they were ever there. Yeah, if a person has the opportunity to get a blood test and they can exert some pressure on the tests that will be done, do yeah. everything you can. Plead with your clinicians to measure insulin. Yeah. And ideally, your fasting insulin is going to be less than six um, microunits per mil. Yeah. Those are our units here in the U.S. And then if the number goes up, let's say, to around the low teens, that's not ideal. And of course, it's higher teens in the 20s beyond. That's very, very problematic. Yeah. I say the not ideal part because like every hormone in the body, insulin has a rhythm to it. Mm -hmm. It will ebb and it will flow. And it's entirely possible that someone is exquisitely insulin sensitive, but they had their insulin measured and it came back at 13. That could be their absolute peak in the entire 24-hour cycle. And so I wouldn't want them to lose hope and think that they're, you know, metabolically ruined. Um, that's why it's nice. As much as I'm an advocate of measuring fasting insulin, um, look at your triglyceride to HDL ratio. You mm -hmm. will always get your lipids measured. Even if you can't convince your clinician to measure fasting insulin, mm -hmm. you can throw the LDL number out the window. It is so irrelevant. Um, just take your triglycerides, divide it by your HDL. And there's some differences across ethnicities. You yeah. know, from, from, from blacks to Caucasians to Asians to Hispanics. Yeah. Um, it, it's sort of, or, or in South Asians, it sort of spreads out a little bit where uh, Caucasians and Asians, ideally that number is less than 1.5. If the okay. triglyceride to HDL ratio is less than 1.5, that's a good sign for blacks. Yeah. Um, that number is, the cutoff is closer to one. You want that number to be okay. lower than one. And yeah. then for uh, Hispanics and South Asians, it seems that that number, the, the range is a little more normal around two. So if you're lower than two, that's generally a good sign.